everyone, and welcome to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols. Well, up first, we've got Tim Beavers. He's the Director of Development Services, and he'll tell us all about a way that we can spark residential developments. Here he is. We'll start with the city. You know, we've taken a hard look at residential development this year inside the city and what we can do to uh, remove some barriers and entice people to look at Bristol as a place to build single family homes and multifamily homes. So we had uh, staff performed a uh, study on housing and updated it in 2017 and updated it this year. And out of that, there came some ideas for things like a tap fee holiday, some uh, residential building plans, things like that uh, this year that we wanted to try to implement. So prior to that, our incentive for residential development was the materials incentives for water and sewer extensions. So, but they did, it, it, it does come out of the desire to try to entice people to build here in Bristol and try to get them interested in building in Bristol. The tap fee holiday starts January 1st 2021 and runs through March 31st, 2021. And during that time frame, people building, constructing residential single family homes can purchase tap fees, water and sewer tap fees for a total of $10. They have to construct the home within a year of purchasing or of March, 2021. They have to construct the home by March, uh, 31st of 2022 actually have pulled the building permit for that home by then. So it is really once again more of an infill type development if we have vacant lots uh, to allow infills, maybe entice some people to do some infilling of vacant lots. And they'll save uh, about, uh, well they'll actually save $1,790 on tap fees using that program. So once again, it's uh, just an incentive for people to look at building in Bristol builders and developers. So on uh, building codes, what we did is we adopted the recently the 2018 International Residential Code and the 2018 International Energy Conservation Code as it pertains to residential structures. And we also adopted the 2017 National Electrical Code for all construction in the city. Previously, the city was on the 2012 version of the International Residential Code and the 2012 version of the International Energy Conservation Code and the 2011 version of the National Electrical Code. And what that has done, especially not so much with the Electrical Code, but with the Residential Codes, is allow for not having to do, perform a uh, duct blast test, which tests the air tightness in your HVAC ducts, and then not requiring a blower door test, which once again tests the uh, air tightness of your structure itself. And all that saves money for the developer. Those tests do cost some extra money to perform. Uh, the bigger thing on the residential code was we require less insulation in the structures than the 2012 version. The 2018 version uh, allows for use of the 2009 tables as required for insulation in those structures, which is a lesser value, thus the walls aren't as thick on your exterior walls and the insulation in the attic is not as thick. So it is a cost saving to builders. And we did all that. That's what we had heard previously is that, hey, these things you adopted in 2012, they have added cost to our structures that other areas in the region don't have. And we just, once again, wanted to try to make it as friendly as possible for people to develop residential structures in the city. Right. And then in regards to the um, uh, building plans, we do have an exciting new thing. We have procured three sets of building plans that the uh, codes department is looking through to make sure they're in compliance with the codes. Uh, they are available free for use for, for any builder. They can come in and just use those plans to construct homes with if they choose to. Uh, 
with no cost and that saves them on time and effort of drawing any plans necessary to get their building permits and makes it quicker time frame to obtain those building permits. Uh, those plans can be viewed online and it is exciting. I don't think anybody in this region has that opportunity. Uh, they are unlimited use so they can, you know, it's not like I can just let one person use them. Anybody can use them. And they're really for more of our RE zones, our residentially established areas, which are Fairmount area and over the Windsor Avenue, Anderson Street area, the old, what uh, we used to call the weed and seed area. But, and once again, looking for infill of homes. I mean, they are look similar to the homes in those areas. So it is a good opportunity. We really want people to look at it and see if that might be something useful to them. If it's successful, we will look at expanding that to other styles of homes for uh, other vacant lots in the city. So that's exciting, brand new thing. And then the other incentive we have already in place and have had uh, for a few years is our utility extension program. And basically developers of new subdivisions can uh, recover the cost for materials for water and sewer extensions inside the developments. And that process is in general, the developer will pay for those materials up front to the city. We'll use our bulk pricing to obtain those materials. And at the end, once they are installed and accepted, the uh, city will reimburse the developers for those material costs. And that information, once again, if you visit the website, you can uh, find out about all the programs we've mentioned. Well, I mean, we've been very fortunate through the, uh, you know, economic times, the, even the recession, that we have had steady development of residential properties. I think right now, the what our understanding from realtors is there is a need for residential homes in the city. And uh, we have just tried to look at how can we position the city to take advantage of that need and try to take once again barriers away from builders to make residential investments inside the city limits. Uh, I think that demand will still be there and it will grow as uh, if the casino move forward as it moves forward and uh, as development continues industrial development and um, service industry development inside the corporate limits and in the region so i think right now the market is a certainly a seller's market on one hand because people that put their existing homes up for sale and new homes, they seem to have multiple offers fairly quickly on those properties. And it is also somewhat a buyer's market because of the interest rates are very, very low right now. But uh, the cost of the homes are certainly a seller's market right now, but there is a demand and that's talking to our realtors, area realtors and developers. There is a demand uh, for especially single family residential home. I mean, there's certainly demand for apartments as evidenced by developments that have gone on and we've seen in the past years here in the city. But uh, we do understand there is a pinup demand for, uh, you know, affordable single family homes. Up next, some information about the Help Your Neighbor program. Don't go anywhere. Hi everyone and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host Sheridan Nichols and up next we've got Lola McVeigh and she's going to tell us all about the Help Your Neighbor program. Here she is. Hello, my name is Lola McVeigh and I'm the Director of Accounting and Finance at Bristol Tennessee Essential Services. I'm here today to talk about our BTES Help Your Neighbor program. This is a program that was started in 1992 and it's through customers donations. Um, it's a kind of a neighbor helping neighbor situation. The BTS board also has generously agreed to match those donations up to $20,000 a year. So it is a BTS program, but we have some help from our local agencies here in town. Our Salvation Army certifies the eligibility of our applicants, and then the United Way of Bristol administers those funds. So 2020 has been a different year. So we have done uh, some additional things uh, to help that program. So this year, TBA, through its Community Cares Program, agreed to donate $15,000 
to our Help Your Neighbor program. BTS matched that $15,000 and through a special campaign, our customers, with our customers, we donated almost $45,000 to that campaign this year. We did make another change. Usually customers could get assistance once a year and we did change that to two times a year instead of one. In 2020 this year, so far, we have served 270 households with that. That equates to about 616 individuals that have benefited from this program. So if you need assistance, you can apply for assistance on our website at bts.net slash HYN. You can sign up. It's all through email or phone. You don't have to go in person. You can contact the Salvation Army. We would love to have you help us donate to that fund. You can do that on our website as well. We do have a roundup program where we will round up your bill to the next even dollar each month. You can make recurring donations on your bill. Let's say you want to make $5 a month. You can sign up to do that or you can make a one-time donation. Thank you so much for all the support for the Help Your Neighbor program. Thanks, Lola, for all that information. Well, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Inside Bristol. I'm your host, Sheridan Nichols. Well, up next, we've got Captain Charlie Thomas from the Bristol, Tennessee Police Department with this very important reminder. Every year during the holidays, we step up our DUI enforcement. Typically, the you know everybody wants to celebrate the holidays, so we do see an uptick in uh, drunk driving incidents. Uh, so we, it's something we pay a, a lot of attention to to try to keep the public safe. There's evidence out there that even one drink can impair uh, some people's ability to drive. So have a designated driver. If you know that you're going uh, somewhere and that you're going to drink, make sure that there's somebody there that's sober to drive everybody and get everybody home safe. Um, you know, we Uber and Lyft are out there, and those are a whole lot cheaper than uh, a DUI conviction, which generally, by the time you pay court fees and attorney fees and SR-22 insurance, uh, cost about $10,000. So, uh, you know, just be cognizant of that, and if you're going to drink, be responsible about it. You know, our purpose is not like you say, it's not to arrest people and put them in jail. We're trying to deter the behavior and keep it from happening to begin with. Uh, we can't we can't catch every person that's going to drive them impaired. And uh, generally, uh, you know, we we're fortunate we live in an area that has uh, where we have very few fatality accidents. But generally, when we do have one, alcohol is involved, um, and so. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to do is keep everybody safe. Here are some stats about uh, drunk driving. Every year more than 10,000 people die in drunk driving related collisions. Uh, as far as the Bristol Tennessee Police Department, um, for 2020 so far we've arrested 155 DUI drivers. In 2019 that number was 195, in 2018 it was 143, and in 2017 it was 172. So far for 2020 we have had 22 accidents where alcohol and or drug impairment were suspected, uh, but fortunately we've not had a fatality accident so far this year. Thanks so much for all that information and thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.